आकाशवाणी प्रेजेंट्स मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम निशित कुमार द हेडलाइंस यूनियन होम मिनिस्टर अमित शाह टू चेयर ऑल पार्टी मीटिंग इन इम्फाल टूडे टू ब्रिंग पीस इन मणिपुर Cambodian King Narottam Sihamoni to hold bilateral meetings with President Draupadi Murmu and Prime Minister Narendra Modi in New Delhi today. ISRO to launch Chandrayaan 3 in July this year. IMD predicts rain and gusty winds in northwest India during the next 2 days. Comptroller and Auditor General of India Girish Chandra Murmu re-elected external auditor of WHO for 4 year term. And in cricket, Chennai Super Kings win IPL 2023, beating defending champions Gujarat Titans by five wickets in Ahmedabad. And now the news in detail. Union Home Minister Amit Shah is expected to chair an all-political party meeting in Imphal, Manipur today. Mr. Shah will review the prevailing situation and meet all stakeholders to restore peace and communal harmony in the state. Mr Shah reached Imphal last night on a 3 day visit to Manipur. Just after his arrival Mr Shah attended a cabinet meeting in which rehabilitation and resettlement plans for the affected families were discussed. We have more from our correspondent. The Union Home Minister interacted with the various women organization at Raj Bhavan Imphal this morning. He is also going to meet leaders of civil organization as part of the peace process. Afterward, Sri Shah will chair all political party meeting to be held at CM Secretariat. The Union Home Minister is visiting violent affected area of Churachandpur district and meeting tribal leaders there. Last night, the Union Home Minister called on the governor of Manipur, Sushri Anusia Uke and discuss on the present situation in Manipur. Jajit Thakram from Imphal, Akasmani News. The King of Cambodia, Narodom Sihamoni, will have bilateral meetings with President Draupadi Murmu and Prime Minister Narendra Modi in New Delhi today. He arrived in New Delhi yesterday on a three-day visit to India. He was received by Minister of State for External Affairs Raj Kumar Ranjan Singh, Vice President Jagdeep Dhankar, and External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jayashankar will call on the visiting dignitary. The King's State visit marks the culmination of the celebrations of the 70th anniversary of diplomatic relations between India and Cambodia. which were established in 1952 the visit is taking place after almost 6 decades with the last being that of the current king's father in 1963 our correspondent has filed this report king norodom sihamoni will be accorded ceremonial reception at the folk court of rashtrapati bhavan today morning he will pay floral tributes to mahatma gandhi at rajghat president dropri murmu will host a state banquet in honor of the visiting dignitary today evening india and cambodia enjoy warm and friendly relations marked by civilizational cultural and economic linkages and deep rooted people to people ties the multifaceted relationship is based on shared cultural values commitment to foster economic growth collaboration in the field of defense and security and convergence on regional and global issues india actively assists cambodia in capacity building and human resource development through training slot under the itec and scholarships under iccr anupamish akashwani news delhi indian space research organization isro chairman s somanath has said that chandrayaan 3 will be launched in july this year he made his remarks after the successful launch of the second generation navigation satellite nsv01 from satish dhawan space center in shri harikota yesterday he said the target is to launch it in july in the time slot based on the orbital parameters and isro is working towards that chandrayaan will be launched in july lesson is very simple learn from the past do what is possible with your capacity at this moment every time we implement various committees recommendations happen we do implement but things can go wrong it is like that this business is that possibility of a failure is always there that's why we are tense no otherwise you could have fire and forget it chandrayaan 3 is a follow on mission to chandrayaan 2 to demonstrate end to end capability in safe landing and roving on the moon it consists of an indigenous lander module a propulsion module and a rover the lander and the rover will have scientific payloads to carry out experiments on the lunar surface the government has decided to grant waiver of interstate transmission charges ists to offshore wind projects and extend the waiver to green hydrogen and green ammonia this decision has been taken to facilitate wider execution of offshore wind energy initiatives 
to promote the expansion of green hydrogen and green ammonia projects and to encourage the offtake of renewable energy from energy storage system projects. As per the notification issued by the Ministry of Power, a complete waiver of ISTS charges has been given for offshore wind power projects commissioned on or before 31st December 2032 for a period of 25 years from the date of commissioning of the project. The government has also granted a complete waiver of ISTS charges for a period of 25 years from the date of commissioning of the project for green hydrogen and green ammonia production units using Renewable Energy Commission after 8th of March 2019. Ahead of the tourist season and ensuing summer vacations in schools and other institutions across the country, the Northern Railways have decided to run three special trains from New Delhi to Jammu Udhampur Katra from June 2nd to July 30th. The special train from New Delhi to Sri Mata Vaishnu Devi Katra will start on June 2nd. It will leave New Delhi station every Friday at 11.15 p.m. and reach Katra the next day at 11.25 a.m. From Katra, the train will leave every Saturday at 6.30 p.m. The second special train, New Delhi Udhampur New Delhi, will run from June 1st to July 30th. It will leave New Delhi every Thursday at 11.15 p.m. and reach Udhampur at 10.55 a.m. the next day. And in return, it will leave Udhampur every Friday at 7 p.m. Another weekly special train between New Delhi, Sri Mata, Vaishno Devi, Katra will relieve the pilgrims as it will make four rounds from June 3rd to July 25th. The train will leave New Delhi every Saturday at 11.15 p.m. and reach Katra next day at 11.25 a.m. and leave Katra for New Delhi every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. This is Akashwani giving you the news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Welcome back. Comptroller and Auditor General Girish Chandra Murmu has been re-elected as the External Auditor of the World Health Organization WHO for a four-year term from 2024 to 2027. CAG is already holding this position in WHO since 2019 for a four-year term from 2019 to 2023. The election was held yesterday in the 76th World Health Assembly in Geneva, where the CAG of India was re-elected with an overwhelming majority of 114 out of 156 votes in the first round of voting itself. After the election, in his address to the World Health Assembly, Mr. Murmu outlined his vision as external auditor for WHO while emphasizing the process improvement for better outcomes, transparency and a professional approach. As the NDA government completes nine years in office, Akashwani News brings a series of special stories on initiatives taken by the government. Building a robust health infrastructure has been the focus of the government during the last nine years. The Poshan Abhiyan was launched in 2018 to tackle the malnutrition problem prevalent in the country. The mission has come a long way in fulfilling its objectives. We have more from our correspondent. The National Nutrition Mission or the Poshan Abhiyan is a flagship scheme launched by the Modi government. The mission aims to address the issue of malnutrition and improve nutritional outcomes for children, pregnant women and lactating mothers. The program takes a multi-sectoral approach and focuses on convergent action across various departments. A robust ICT-enabled platform named Poshan Tracker has been designed to capture real-time data on implementation and monitoring of Anganwadi services across the country. The focus is is on spreading awareness through community-based events and awareness campaigns. Poshan Ma and Poshan Pakwara are being celebrated every year to promote the masses of nutrition. Under Shaksham Anganwadi, 40,000 Anganwadi centers are being strengthened with better infrastructure including internet connectivity, LED screens and smart learning and child-friendly learning equipment. The government has released funds to the states for the construction of toilets and providing drinking water facilities under the Swachhata Action Plan. The government is also providing incentives to Anganwadi workers on completing at least 60% of home visits to pregnant women, lactating mothers and children up to the age of 2 years. Aditya Shukla, Akashwadi News, Gorakhpur. International Day of Yoga IDY will be celebrated all around the world on the 21st of next month. Today we bring you a special story on evidence-based research in yoga. We have details from our correspondent. Yoga is an age-old traditional practice focused on bringing the mind-body together. It is aimed at encouraging mental relaxation and states of calmness. Research has found that yoga helps in improving sense of well-being. In a study, yoga was found to significantly improve the quality of life. 
studies have shown that yoga can reduce levels of the stress hormone cortisol though yoga cannot be mastered overnight a 3 month program showed lowered levels of stress fatigue and depression some research also shows that yoga has an antidepressant effect Yoga also improves heart health and reduces risk factors for heart disease. There are also other indications that yoga as a lifestyle choice slows the progression of heart disease. A study on Surya Namaskar revealed a significant increase in upper body strength over 24 weeks of practice. For participants, this also came with the benefits of decrease in body fat percentage. Evidence shows that adding regular yoga into routines could help promote better sleep. A regular yoga routine can deliver wide benefits for both physical and mental wellness. With Anupam Mishra, this is Agraj Pratap, Akashwani News, Delhi. India Meteorological Department (IMD) has predicted rain and gust events in northwest India during the next two days. IMD said hailstorm is expected in isolated places over North Rajasthan, Jammu Division, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, and Punjab during the next two days. Rajasthan and Uttarakhand are expected to witness thunder squall today and tomorrow. We spoke to IMD Director Chandigarh Manmohan. fresh west and southwest affected the northwest india and uh, punjab and haryana received very good rainfall during last 24 hours even including chandigarh rain occurred about uh, 25 mm during last 24 hours and uh, today we will again see rainfall in punjab and haryana including chandigarh at fairly widespread area and thereafter rainfall will occur at scattered places during the next two days we have also issued the warning for thunder activity and with the gusty winds for next two days Raksha Mantri Rajnath Singh attended the swearing-in ceremony of President-elect of Nigeria, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, in Abuja yesterday. In addition to senior officials of Ministry of Defence, the Defence Minister's delegation to Nigeria included top executives of Hindustan Aeronautics Limited and Goa Shipyard Limited. These executives held a series of meetings with Nigerian military and government representatives for identifying the requirements which can be fulfilled by the Indian defence companies. Besides high-level political representation from countries across the African continent, including several heads of state, India was among the select non-African nations that were represented in the swearing-in ceremony at ministerial level, reflecting the high priority and strength of India's bilateral relations with Nigeria. Chennai Super Kings won its fifth IPL title by defeating defending champions Gujarat Titans by five wickets in the rain-interrupted match at Narendra Modi Stadium in Ahmedabad last night, chasing a revised victory target of 170 runs in 15 overs against defending champions Gujarat Titans. Chennai Super Kings reached the target in the last ball of the final over with a loss of five wickets. Earlier, Chennai Super Kings won the toss and opted to bowl. Gujarat Titans scored 214 runs, 4-4 wickets in the stipulated 20 overs. Sai Sudarshan was the top scorer with 96 runs, and Riddhiman Saha scored 54 runs. And now for a look at today's newspapers. It's over to Ramya. Thank you, Nishit. Amit Shah and Manipur to review security. Hot talks with Kuki's Maytis is the cover page story in the Indian Express. Cambodian King arrives for talks with PM Modi and other leaders. Headlines: The Statesman. Rolls Royce booked on craft charge in aircraft deal is the front page story in the Hindu. Northeast gets first Vande Bharat Express connecting Guwahati with new Jalpaiguri reports the Asian Age. Gehlot pilot to fight Rajasthan upcoming elections unitedly says Congress in the headline story in the Pioneer. Praveen Shivastav, a 1988 batch retired IAS officer, takes oath as the Central Vigilance Commissioner, reports the Tribune. RBI flags governance gaps in banks, attempts to hide stress, says Business Line. Erdogan set to rule Turkey till 2028 after his dramatic win in polls, reports Hindustan Times. And finally, rain, overcast sky in Delhi, heat wave unlikely till June 4th, reports the Asian Age. And with that, it's back to you, Nishit. Thank you, Ramya. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Union Home Minister Amit Shah to chair all-party meeting in Imphal today to bring peace in Manipur. Cambodian King Narottam Sihamoni to hold bilateral meetings with President Draupadi Murmu and Prime Minister Narendra Modi in New Delhi today. ISRO to launch Chandrayaan-3 in July this year. IMD predicts rain and gusty winds in northwest India during the next two days. Comptroller and Auditor General of India Girish Chandra Murmu re-elected external auditor of WHO for four-year term. And in cricket, Chennai Super Kings win IPL 2023, beating defending champions Gujarat Titans by five wickets in Ahmedabad. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.